99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, Sergeant Meredith, 909, in service, on the air. This is Sergeant Dan Meredith of Unit 99 at Headquarters, Police Department, City of Sacramento, California. My detail is to ride in Unit 99, our tape recorder equipped radio car, and to respond whenever the dispatcher transmits a signal to one of our other units on duty somewhere in the city. At the scene, we make the recordings which we provide for this program. Now, to tell you more about Unit 99, here is our chief, James V. Hicks, Sacramento Police. Unit 99 is a regulation radio patrol unit of the Sacramento Police Department, cruising the streets with a tape recorder. Sergeant Meredith is on duty and works for your protection, as every police officer does. He can and does make arrests. His orders are to respond to the radio call. You go with him, and what you hear is real. Police, criminals, victims, and witnesses are all real. And whether an arrest is made or the subject released, what happens is real. Make no mistake about that. Now to Unit 99 and Sergeant Dan Meredith on duty. Unit 58. 58 just received a 901 16th and Q Queen. Officers Tinker and uh, Rath were following behind them now. The car in the intersection is a Buick sedan. The one on Q between 15th and 16th near the uh, crosswalk is a Ford Mo Model A, about a 29. There's quite a bit of gasoline spilled here. Motor is strong and it's all over the intersection. What did you say, Rath? I have the fire department coming over to wash down the gas in the street. Mm, I see gas. There's a lot of gasoline all over the street here and it's very dangerous. Hello. Are you, Are you one of the drivers? Yes, I am. Anybody hurt? My back is a little stiff for me from the jerk. I got I was driving the front car there. And uh, I was waiting for the light to change. He ran up and smacked me in the back. Where is this other driver? I have him in the car. How does he look, Brad? Well, he has an injured nose. I believe he's intoxicated. Okay, Brad. What happened here, fellow? I just couldn't stop. You have brakes on your car? Yeah, oh, barely. Uh, have you been drinking tonight? I had a beer or two, yes. How much have you been drinking? Not, this, not, not, not that much, no. What do you mean? I came through the green light down there. 15th Street. Uh, 15th, uh, 15th Street. And I came up here and that guy just didn't move, that's all. He was stationary and you struck him in the rear. Right. Uh-huh. You had 58 to Cayman 907. No, that's You send a tow truck, 16th and Q Queen, pick up a Ford. Credit, 16th and Q Queen. That is correct. Okay, you see. You call, Tinker? Yes, yeah, this man just drove up behind this automobile that's wrecked here, and he appears to have had uh, quite a bit to drink himself. Have you been drinking tonight? Oh, I've had a couple of beers. A couple of beers? Uh-huh. All right, now, can you stand on your right foot? Sure. Don't make me scared now. Don't make you know. We don't want to make you scared. Now try your left foot. All right. Don't. Can't do it, huh? Well, you make me scared. Oh, well, you relax. We don't want to make you scared. Well, you make me scared. That's Why should doing. we scare you? I don't know. Well, there I'm going. You should be scared without us. You know, you, you make me scared. You're stopping me and... Sure, here I am. Uh, and which one? Mm. That's good enough for me. We better take him down and have the doctor examine him, too. Oh. Are you going to put him in your unit? Or uh, would you, want... you take him down for us? Yeah, we'll, we'll take him down, Tinker. We'll wait for you down there oh, for the other fella, too. Now, how about his car? Are you going to take care of his car, yes, too? Yes, we'll take care of his car, too. Okay. Where have you been drinking tonight? Oh, I took a drink in my car, and that's about all. You have some drinks in your no, car? There's no drinks in my car. Well, how did you take a drink in your car? Well, we was down at uh, the club. Well, that's where you got them. Mm-hmm. 
But I haven't done anything wrong. Were you driving while drinking? Well, I mean, I haven't done... I mean, I haven't made a wrong move. Well, should you be dri driving while intoxicated? Well, they're yeah, right around right the corner. You didn't answer my question. Oh, well, okay. You want to sit in the back of that car there and... This is the emergency hospital. Just go right in there. Right there, sir. Hello, doctor. Hospital 502. Check. What's the date today? Uh, it's not 12. It's the... Uh, uh, third. It's not second. All right, read the time off my watch. Uh, about two minutes after 12. Have you been to a dentist or a doctor today? By today, I mean the second. No. The past 24 hours. Do you have sugar diabetes, sir? No. Have you taken any medicine in the past 24 hours? No. Have you been drinking? Yes. When was the last drink you had? Ago. What have you been drinking this evening? I had a whiskey high, I guess. All right. Do you have any physical disabilities that you're aware of that might interfere with your coordination or your ability to drive? I don't think so. Okay, stand easy with both your feet together so that your shoes touch heel and toe together. Pull the toes together a little closer. That's fine. Now just stand like that with your shoes touching. With your feet together, hold your hands out in front of you like this, uh, like this. Now with your feet still together and your hands out, close your eyes, please. Subject is swaying right, slightly. Now stand, uh, sit over here in your chair again. Pull your arms out from your sides like I'm doing now. Now I want you to reach up and touch the end of your finger to the end of your nose like this. All right, that's good. Now you just sit easy and relax. Doctor, could you give us the findings on this driver, your examination? Uh, I'm afraid the findings show that this man's been drinking a little bit too much and should not be driving a car. The wagon crew has just brought a victim into the emergency hospital who has just been shot. Oh, Carol, Beatty, where'd you pick this man up? This man was picked up at 3rd Street. Do you know how it happened? We do not know the information as yet. Was he shot in the back? Apparently he was shot in the back. Do you know who this, did this to you? Say, do you know who did this to you? You don't know? Don't you have any idea at all? I don't think we're going to be in. I think we probably got to get him on out to the county where they can uh, get some blood transfusions ready for him. Okay. Give him the help that he really needs. I'll pull him down while you're on your way out. I think this will be good. Fourth using the siren. is about to examine the driver who was involved in the accident at 16th and Q. Holding 
39. What's the date today? Hmm, I think it's the 31st. Or the 1st. Hmm, must be the 1st. Okay. Take the time off of my watch, please. Uh, 12, uh, 24. That's right. That's right. Have you been to a dentist or a doctor in the past 24 hours? Yes, sir. For what? For a uh, dentist. What time of day was it? It was 10 o'clock today. 10 o'clock today. Mm -hmm. Did he Lucky. give you any medicine or any drugs or gas? He gave you no again. He gave you no again. Mm -hmm. Did he give you any capsules any, or anything no. like that? Did he give you any pain medicine to take when you left the office? Mm -hmm. No. Or no prescription, huh? No. Have you been drinking tonight? Had a couple of beers. When did you do this drinking? An hour ago. Mm -hmm. All right, sir, now I want you to stand up over here on the floor right where those two lines cross. Facing toward me over here. Do you see that crack in the cement between us? To be real careful now and do a good job of walking right down that line with your heels and toes both on the line. Heels and toes, heels and toes, toes both on the line. <laughs> oh, I failed. Give me another chance there. Sure. I'm not too good on this deal. All right, now turn around, walk back, take it slow and careful, and do a good job for yourself. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. All right, now stand right there, nice and easy. <laughs> Raise one foot up off the ground and stand on the other one like I'm doing. I want to see if you can balance for a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a long time, isn't it? Okay, so much speed. Let's see how you do on the other side. Good, I am. Okay, stand with both your feet together like this so that the shoes touch, heel and toe. Pull them right in together. That's it. Now hold them like that. Hold your hands out in front of you like this. Now your feet together and your hands out. Close your eyes. I want to watch your balance like this now. All right, that's fine. Now come and sit in your chair again, please. Well, let's take about a teaspoonful of blood out of your arm and send it to the laboratory and let them analyze it for alcohol concentration. No, I, I'll go by your findings, whatever you, you decide is best, except that uh, I don't think I've had too much to drink. I really don't. Well, if that's the truth of the matter, then the blood alcohol could be in your favor, and you could perhaps... Uh, have a grounded argument that your coordination is due to some other problem. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to argue. Well, yeah, I just don't want a 502 against me is all I, I can say. Well, the way things stand now, you have one, I think. Uh, and uh, the only way I can offer you to so-called beat the rap is to show that your blood alcohol concentration is not high and that your lack of coordination could be due to something else. Now, if that's the way you feel, this could be to your advantage. So I'd be happy to do it for you. Well, I think it's fair to say that you have something to gain and nothing to lose. All right, let's do it that way. All right. Okay. Fine, slip off your jacket and roll your sleeve up and go ahead and take it. Incidentally, doctor, what is your uh, conclusion on this? Well, I think this man uh, shows in coordination that, in my opinion, is probably due to drinking, and I'll have to say that unless the blood alcohol test proves it to the contrary. Then, in your opinion, this man shouldn't be driving a car? Yes, sir. That's right. You can have a seat again. They just brought some fellow into the emergency that might have something to do with the shooting. Officer Devers just brought him in. Let's get in on it. He knocked me down and then he kicked me in the face and I jumped up and run up the stairs around and down the back stairs and he followed me, see? But I know them stairs and he didn't know and he ran the, the wrong way and then he had to turn around and go back and I got ahead of him then. And I run down the 
Trump and we were out and I got to the office door and opened the door. When he come back out the hall, he had a knife in his hand. He said, I'll kill you now. I said, no, you won't. I said, back up. And I pulled the gun out. And he said, uh, he wouldn't stop. I said, told him three times to stop. I mean, he didn't stop. And I just, boom, boom, just like that. And I stopped him. Well, how did all this start? Over, over uh, him knocking on that door. He, he ain't got no room up there. He wasn't staying at the hotel. He'd just come up there and was, you know, after the saloon's closed, they come up there and want to put on a wine party. You see, in some other guy's room. You should go up there and tell them to leave while they get tough. You are the landlord there? I'm the night clerk. Night clerk. Yeah. And I walked upstairs to see who was pounding on the door. And then I, it, it happens all the time. And I asked this guy would he leave. I said, don't wake these fellows up. They're, they're working men and they, they want to sleep. And he was grumbling and growling and he followed me downstairs. Well, when he got right there by the door, he decided he was going to give me a licking, see? And the door of the office was closed. And that, I couldn't get in. Is that how you got your face yeah. get marked up? Yeah. He knocked me down first, and he kicked me right here. The side of the face. Yeah. And I jumped up, and he hit and missed. And I run, I turned and run upstairs, up the stairs, and down the end of the hall, and down the back stairs. And he missed the, the there's a real hook like that going into the downstairs, see? When he missed that, he went straight ahead. That was upstairs, up on the roof. So he had to turn around and come back. By the time he got turned around, I was ahead of him, see? And uh, I come down and, and around the hall and into the office, and I opened up the office door. And he come there and, and uh, pulled this knife, and he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you up, he says. I says, no, you ain't. Well, he had this knife in his hand, and I told him to stop, and he wouldn't stop, so I stopped him. And I shot three times, yes. Where did you get the gun? I had, I've had it for 30 years. On your person at the time? No, it was in the desk drawer. And he was coming at you at the time you shot him? Yeah. Okay. How old are you? Huh? How old are you? Um, 50, 56. This 56, pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> A detective Nugent, what are you going to do with this man that did the shooting? Well, right now we're going to take him up to the detective bureau. We've called for a deputy district attorney to come down and question him immediately. Devers, how did you happen to contact this suspect on this deal, the shooting? Well, we arrived at the scene why the man was laying in the, his face down on the top of the stairway, and the night clerk was there, and he, he admitted that he when they shot him. Said he shot him in self-defense. I see. We're in the detective division. Officer Morrison, I see you have two uh, citizens here. What are they here for? Well, these two fellows were in the hotel at the time of the shooting. And they heard the man come up in the hotel, raising trouble, mm -hmm. pounding on the door. They were awakened from their sleep and walked out in the hallway at the time of the shooting. Were you uh, fellows living in this hotel at the time? Yes, sir. About four doors from where it, uh, he started knocking banging on the door. Uh-huh. Oh, and uh, the night clerk got up and come up and told him to keep quiet or go out one. And so then he jumped the clerk. And uh, the clerk started going downstairs and asked him to come on out. So he followed the clerk down and then jumped the clerk every round to those uh, flight of steps. Mm -hmm. Then he ran the clerk from that floor back up the steps, the bang down the back steps again, then the clerk made it to the office and got his pistol mm -hmm. still in there. Did you see a knife? No, sir, not, not until I came downstairs. You saw this uh, other man beating the uh, no, clerk? No, I just only heard it. I only heard it. You didn't see anything? No, sir. But you knew that this other man yes. that was shot was causing a lot of trouble? Oh, yes, he was the one doing all the bamming on the door, hollering. Mm -hmm. and, and this other hollering. gentleman with you, who is he? Oh, this is boy, he's living next to the uh, second floor. Well, he lives in the same uh, oh. hotel, too, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you hear this fracas tonight, too? Uh, I heard a uh, stumbling, you know? Like a stumbling. I was sleeping. I'm getting sick, you know, my stomach. And uh, I heard somebody running by my, my door to the back and then come back and I opened the door and I peeked through the door and I saw this man, you know? And then he got close to the office and he said, I got something to kill you, see? That's all right. 
Sergeant, we found the knife that this fellow was using. We found the knife on the fifth step from the top floor, but it was closed at the time. And when we arrived, the man was lying flat on his back with a bullet hole between the shore blades. Mm -hmm. And the ambulance crew came and got him and removed him. And at the time, I talked to the clerk of the hotel, and he said, at the time, the man had threatened him with a knife and came towards him, and he fired three shots, which we found one bullet hole in the wall and the empty, the lead part of the shell was lying on the floor. And uh, we only found one hole in the body at the time. Is this the gun over here on the desk? Yes, this is the gun. It's an Ivor Johnson five-shot pistol. Good with caliber. 38 with three empty shells. You take a bureau right there? Who? Oh, County Hospital, yes. Well, we, we don't have any information on that as yet. Uh, uh, the only information we have to date is that uh, he's a visitor in town... Uh, well, just as soon as we get that information, we'll let you know. Yes, yes, we'll do that. Thank you. Who was that, Weber? Well, that was the county hospital. They were uh, inquiring uh, as to whether we had any, any information on his uh, relatives. Uh, she said he's in bad shape. This all happened within an hour or so at the Hall of Justice. The shooting victim survived. It was the decision of the district attorney's office that the hotel clerk fired the shots in self-defense and he was released without charge. Both drunk driving suspects were close to the borderline, but in the doctor's opinion, neither should have been driving automobiles and both were charged and fined for the offense. I might point out that the man who was involved in the accident took his sobriety test under a handicap. It was discovered later that he had a broken kneecap, although at the time he was unaware of it. This is Unit 99 in Sacramento, California. These on-the-scene tape recordings were provided by the Sacramento Police Department and were made on duty by Sergeant Dan Meredith in Unit 99. Your host is Chief James B. Hicks of the Sacramento Police Department. Unit 99 was directed by Tony Kester and came to you from Sacramento. The unit 99 to KMA 907. The unit 99, 908 coming in. End of tour. Check 99, KMA 907. Unit 99 has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.